let's talk about predatory pricing. Security family, welcome back to Security Guard Command. Really appreciate you guys. If you like this video, please hit that like button. If you like my videos, please subscribe. I definitely appreciate your support. A few videos back, I did a video on antitrust, and I focused mainly on price fixing. But there are more aspects to antitrust than just price fixing. Um, what I want to talk about today is something that definitely applies to the security industry and um, kind of applies more or less to the larger security companies and that is predatory pricing and my video primarily focuses on California uh, because California has some special laws that are a little bit different than the federal laws as far as predatory pricing is concerned and so uh, this is primarily California, but definitely is not limited to only California. Um, with that being said, I also want to state that, that I am not a lawyer, and this is not professional advice. This is simply uh, my thoughts and my opinions that I am voicing out here. Um, but let's move forward on this. Predatory pricing is essentially when a company drops their price below their operating costs and they're actually taking a loss and, and, the, and their, their intent is to choke out their competition, to eliminate their competition and that's when it becomes a violation. Now, we, there are a few companies that, that appear to do this. Um, one of the big ones, a three letter company, seems to do this quite often. They'll move into an area, they will underbid everybody um, and basically choke out all their competition. And we know that they're they're taking a loss, but they're absorbing that loss with their with with the greater sum of their company. So they've got lots of revenue. And one of the things is that um, one of the one of the things that you that you have to do to, in order to have a, a antitrust violation with price predatory pricing is that the company has to have 40% of the market share uh, so they have to be pretty large now we can think of a few companies that do and they even kind of brag about it on their own website and I'll, I'll show you a, a screenshot here check this out so Allied Universal on their website they state their global scale uh, and they quote Operating in more than 90 countries with revenues of approximately 20 billion, we are supported by efficient processes and systems that can only come with scale to help deliver our promise locally. So essentially what we have here is a monopolistic type company who's buying up all of the smaller companies around them and then they are moving into a new area and they are bidding on, on projects and the small companies can't compete with that pricing and so they end up losing the bid because of, of this predatory pricing that is happening. Now, if a single small security company was to file a complaint or try to sue um, and, and, and claim predatory pricing, they probably wouldn't be successful in that. But if several companies join together and say a class action suit or if they all claim that they all suffered the same loss, uh, they might have some ground. Again, this is my opinion. I, I'm speculating at this point. But if, if small companies join together to come against the larger companies who are doing these predatory pricing uh, activities, they might stand a chance at actually succeeding and being awarded damages for loss uh, due to the predatory pricing and um, here's the California here's the California laws surrounding uh, predatory pricing right here 
the California Unfair Practices Act, Business and Professions Code 17043 prohibits selling a product below its cost for the purpose of injuring competitors or destroying competition. So that's the California laws, a little bit different than federal laws, and here are the federal laws regarding antitrust predatory pricing. So this comes from the uh, justice.gov website. It's a summary of the law and it states, to prevail on a predatory pricing claim, plaintiff must prove that one, the prices were below an appropriate measure of the defendant's costs in the short term, and two, defendant had a dangerous probability of recouping the investment in below cost price. Now, this is where it differs from California laws. At California law, you don't have to prove anything, uh, whereas in the federal, you do have to prove a little bit here. If you're a small security company and you feel like you've been uh, a victim of predatory pricing uh, by one of these large uh, international or national, nationwide security companies, um, definitely consult an attorney. I am not an attorney, so I can't provide you with legal advice, but definitely consult an attorney who specializes in this sort of thing um, and see if you have, might have a case against it. And, you know, definitely if you feel like you've been wronged and that, the, that, that this company has violated uh, antitrust laws, definitely, uh, you know, seek the, the, the counsel of an attorney and file a complaint and you know, you know, you may be able to find out if, if it actually was a violation or not. But this is one way that we may be able to stop these larger companies from from uh, basically preventing fair trade and competition. Because what happens is, and one of the critical things that needs to happen in order for you to have a case is that you have to be able to prove that the consumer is harmed by these practices. Because low prices in the beginning or at, at first glance are great for the consumer. That's what the consumer wants is low pricing and that's why they win the bids. However, these low prices come at a cost to the consumer and this is what we have to have to point out in these complaints is that when these companies are undercutting the small businesses, the only way they can do this is to provide extremely low wages to their workers and they're gonna end up only attracting the low end, I, I, I back up, most of their employees are going to be low end or very under trained guards. And a lot of times they are not a good fit for the client, for the, for the end user, the customer. And the customer ends up getting hurt because they've got a, um, they, they don't have high quality guards at this low, low wage rate. They will get a few talented, skilled guards, but those guards are not going to stick around for a long time. They're going to use this opening as a, as a stepping stone and they're going to move on to a higher pay rate. And so in the end, what you've got are a handful of, of guards who don't take the job seriously. They are getting paid crap wages. And so they're, that's the only people who are going to stick around are these, are these guards who just don't care. They're collecting a paycheck. They're a warm body. Sad to say. They have no interest in furthering their own education or their, or their selves or providing quality work. And that's where the customer or the consumer ends up getting hurt because there's no way they're gonna keep quality guards at the pay rate that they are going to pay with the billing rate they are billing the client. So that's important in, in an antitrust uh, predatory pricing violation is that the consumer is ended up getting hurt by these low rates. And so um, we know that, that this is what happens. We all see it as, you know, they work in this industry and they are hurting this industry and in the end they hurt the consumer. So, you know, this is just a thought. This is just my, my, my rantings, my ravings. This is just basically um, an idea to put out there for discussion. So let's discuss it in the comments. If you run a security company, what are your experiences being uh, undercut? Did you Have you experienced predatory pricing from some of the larger companies? Uh, let me hear your thoughts. So given this, this is my opinion that 
uh, because of the size of Allied Universal, their their company's profits margins and, and, the, and the amount of money they're bringing in, when they undercut a client, it's my opinion that they are practicing or engaging in predatory pricing. They are getting away with it and it needs to stop because they are hurting the industry um, and they are essentially forming a monopoly that is choking out fair trade and fair competition. Let me know what you guys think. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, share this video. Thank you guys for your support. Hope you have a great day.